The Soldier by John Edward Walker Chapter 1 Three kids were playing in the woods close to the street they lived on on a Friday morning at 10 a.m. They had a day off from school since it was an in-service day. Their names were Mike, Castor, and James. They were all nine-year-old kids at the time from the same class. In the middle of their game of hide-and-seek, a classmate came running. Ted, he was yelling. Guys, you won't believe this. You need to come and t- uh, you need to come and take a look. Mike said, "See what? There's nothing to see out here." "Not here. Just follow. No time to explain." Castor and James followed, wondering what had spiked their friend so much. After around 30 minutes of walking through the forest, they reached a large open grassy field leading towards a hilltop. When they were finally there, all but Ted were speechless. See, I told you, Ted said. Far down the hilltop on the other side, there was a kindergarten, and around it, there was a dozen police cars surrounding it. Press was there, and there was close to a hundred people of spectators around it, which was a lot, considering that the town that lived in Redcliffe only had about 300 citizens in it. Castor said, what's going on in there? jaw dropped over all the activity they were seeing. Ted said, I think it's a crazy man inside there with a gun holding the kids inside hostage. I hear my dad talking about it on the phone at breakfast before he rushed out of the car. Ted's father was the police chief in town, Wayne. Down by the kindergarten, police chief Wayne were yelling at his men to set up a perimeter around the kindergarten with about 300 yards. He had earlier that morning been informed on his phone by the local newspaper that a crazed gunman had called them and said he were holding the kids at Green Forest Kindergarten hostage. Fuck, this is a shitstorm we are not prepared for. We are not capable of handling these types of situation, he said to his lieutenant. What's the plan? How are we going to handle this from here? Jack said. Well, we can't breach it since we would risk endangering the kids. For now, all we can do is uh, set up a perimeter, sit tight, and wait for this asshole to contact us and say what he wants. Wayne looked in his cup of hot coffee that he was standing with and realized for the first time in his life he had actually no clue what to do. Wayne's cell was ringing. Hello? Yeah, hi, I'm Colonel Stephen Green from the 75th Ranger Regiment. I'm calling because I heard about the incident you were facing and I'm sending a team to help you guys out the situation up there on orders from the governor. They should be in around uh, five minutes. Click. Wayne's deputy Jack said, who was that Wayne? It was a colonel from the rangers saying he was sending a team over here to help out with our situation. Great, I guess we'll get the control over the situation pretty quick then. Suddenly, a police officer was running up to Wayne with his phone. When he got to Wayne, he yelled out, It's him! Wayne took the phone, put it on speaker so Jack could also hear it. Hello, this is Earl Wayne, police chief of the Redcliffe PD. The man on the other end replied in a dark, loud voice, I am the man inside the kindergarten, and I'm currently holding 12 children and two women who work there hostage with an AK-74 assault rifle. I have 8,000 rounds of ammunition with me and I got a bag filled with 150 pounds of C4 explosives. My finger is not more than a few millimeters from the trigger. What I want is simple. I want one of the press helicopters to arrive to land and leave it. I know how to pilot it, so I do not need, uh, need one pilot. In addition to this, I want a bag filled with $8 million within the next three hours or you will be picking up pieces of a bunch of kids and the workers here along with me for the next two weeks. In other words, do not fuck with me. Click. Son of a bitch, Jack. What? The guy is a complete psychopath. He has a bunch of explosives plus an assault rifle with enough ammunition to battle an army. A helicopter lands just a few hundred yards from the kindergarten. Four soldiers get out of it, they unload the large case fast, and then the helicopter takes off again, almost as fast as it came. The police chief rushed to them. Hey guys, I'm Wayne, the police chief of this town. One of the soldiers steps up. 
is a man in his early 40s wearing shiny pilot sunglasses, hiding his eyes. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wayne. I'm Joe, and these guys is my team, Sam, Brian, and John. They were all wearing balaclavas, so it was impossible to see their faces. John said, we will be taking charge of the operation from here, and I hope we can count on the assistance of the RCPD if necessary, Wayne. Sure thing, John. Anything you need. You can start by briefing us upon the situation of latest developments in the case. Wayne briefed John and his team about the phone calls, what the unknown man inside the kindergarten and uh, holding hostages, how many there were, and uh, said what he, they were, what he was carrying of firearms and explosives. John said, interesting. Well, this locks out the possibility of breaching the place and taking him down quick and swift. Why? said Wayne. Well, he's holding kids at gunpoint. If he were only armed with a rifle or a gun, then we could probably risk it. But since he's also having explosives in there enough of, and enough of it to level Manhattan, we can't risk it. If you throw in a flashbang, there is no telling what he could do. And from what you told us, it sounds like he has served. Yeah, so he no so he looks like he knows what he's doing. What's the plan, John? Shall shall we do the same thing as we did in Peru? Yeah, I think that's our best bet. We brought some crates with high caliber sniper rifles in the event of this. Listen up, this is what I want you to do. Sam, pick the M one oh seven with thermal scope and set up at the hill east of here. And bring John with you for spotting. Do not forget your air pieces. The same goes for you two other guys. Set up at the hill to the north. Brian, I want you to come with me down here. Let us set up a command post and get some blueprints over the kindergarten here. Wayne was a little confused as to what was actually going on and struggled to get a grip around the situation. He said, uh, uh, Joe, can you explain what's happening? Well, there's not much time, Wayne. Just step back and relax. If he's calling again asking for money, just say that he's on the way from the bank and should be here in 15 minutes. Try and stall him the, be stall him the best you can. Wayne was a little confused, but he agreed to this. End of chapter 1